Model Making Guru is sponsored by eModels.co.uk, your one-stop shop for all your model making needs. eModels.co.uk, make something awesome. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to part four, four of our Patreon exclusive build slash repaint of the 31 inch Jack Pacific Master Chief. Yes. Welcome, welcome patrons uh, to your Patreon exclusive build. Uh, as always, this is being filmed purely for my patrons. Uh, although non-patrons will get a quick overview video separate to this. Uh, but in this episode, we're going to do something a bit different. I'm going to tackle the visor because I'm not anywhere near finished on the actual rest of the model yet, but this is the big boondoggle. It's doing my head in, thinking about it, trying to figure it out how I'm going to do it and stressing how I'm going to mask it off without ripping all the paint off. Thanks to the polypropylene. Thanks, polypropylene. So I'm just going to dive in and tackle it. Uh, now I've got an idea how I'm going to do this visor. What I'm going to do, there are multiple options available, but the way I've settled on, I need to go off what materials I've got to hand because I don't want to be buying new stuff. So my plan is prime it, gloss black, some sort of metallic colour, like a silver. Uh, then we'll have a bit of clear orange over the top. And what I might try and do is paint inside these lips with the yellow colour just to give them a highlight. That's the plan. But I need to find out the best way to do it. So let me get some bits ready and I'll give you the plans. These are my spoons. Yes, we're going to do some spoon testing. So I've got myself some plastic spoons and I've primed them in the Citadel white primer just because I need to be able to see where I'm spraying the black. And what we're going to do, we're going to paint all of these uh, with Tamiya X1 gloss black acrylic. And then we're going to try a couple of, well, three different things. Um, I did have the idea to make one of the things I was going to try, the Mr. Metal buffable metal colours. But they're lacquers. This is acrylic. That's not going to work. I don't want to. I don't want to get myself some um, lacquer black gloss primer or black gloss paint just for the purpose of this one thing because I probably won't need it again. So I don't need to spend that money. So what I'm going to do is work with what I have. So what do we have? Well, we have the gloss black, the X1. That will go on top of the primer first to give it a gloss black coat. I need to get the the best sort of metallic shiny colour I can uh, to go under the orange. So gloss black's always a winner. Then we have three things. We have uh, we have Tamiya Gunmetal. I've got two pots of it, but it's Tamiya Gunmetal X10. Uh, and what we're going to try is we're going to try putting this on first. Very, very thin airbrush application. Incredibly thin. I found if you thin this down stupendously, it can give you quite a nice silvery effect. Uh, and then over the top of that, we will dry brush some Tamiya Chrome Silver, some X11. It's what I used to do on my, what I do on my Gundam frames, and it always gives this nice reflective, shiny aluminium sort of clean metal look. So that's one thing. Gun metal, very light, and then Chrome Silver. The second we're going to do, uh, we'll do four actually. The second is just going to be Chrome Silver, because it's one of Tamiya's more shiny paints, but it is a bit particularly, but I want to use it as part of the control test. So we'll just spray on some Tamiya Chrome Silver without the gun metal first. Uh, and the last thing we're going to try is some C1 Metalizer. Uh, this has been given to me thanks to my good friends at emodels.co.uk. Ping, free plug. Um, and we're going to try putting this on. This is a buffable powder, but it's supposed to resist things like uh, putting decals over the top of it. So it's, it's supposed to be quite hardy. So what we're going to try and do is get the gloss black on, get this on. Then we're going to try spraying the clear orange over the top and see what happens. Uh, I could, I have got a fifth spoon. So what I might do is do this with a gloss coat over the top as well. Because I don't know how a gloss coat or the colour, the paint colour over the top will react with the powder. Will it dissolve the powder and make it look rubbish? I don't know. That's what we need to find out. You are supposed to be able to put decals over this stuff. So it's supposed to be fairly sturdy and you can handle it just about and wipe fingerprints off. So we're going to give this a try. It's just a powder that you put on and buff off. So we're going to give that a try as well. So what we need to do first of all is get these things all glossy black. So let me go and get the paints ready. For this we're going to be using my good old standby uh, TRN1 Neo, um, get my words out, Neo Free Water Trigger 
brush. If you've not tried a trigger brush before, oh, that needs cleaning. Oh, that's sticky. I need to clean that. I'll go off and clean this first. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I'll go off and give this a bit of a clean and then we'll crack on and we're gonna go off with the gloss paint. Now, if you're wondering about this cloth in the background, I'm not gonna be using my spray booth because it's easier for me to film doing this for you guys here on my workbench. So I've put this cloth up to make sure I don't paint my entire workbench. I am gonna have the extractor fan on, so that'll be a bit noisy. I'm not gonna wear a mask because I need to be able to talk to you. However, I'm not wearing a mask. Don't you do that. Whenever you are spraying any kind of paint, and a few people have asked me about this over the last few days, whenever you spray any kind of paint or varnish or anything like that pretty much if you spray anything wear a respirator uh, because you're going to inhale this all the paints in the world contain potentially toxic chemicals so if you're going to be spraying if you can use a spray booth use a spray booth i'm just doing this outside the spray booth so i can film it better and wear a mask i'm not going to so you can hear me right i better go and give this a clean it's all sticky back in a moment Okay, so although I filmed all the spray booth parts that are to come without my mask on so you could hear me, when I watched them back, you couldn't hear me over the sound of the extractor booth fan thing. So, yeah, I'm doing a voiceover. Apologies if you hear, like, a power tool in the background. There's somebody chopping down trees, as there usually is, doing some kind of DIY, so your microphone might pick that up. Anyway, here you can see I am applying the Tamiya gloss black now i will say and you'll see this later on and i'll tell you multiple times it comes out like ass uh, i realized afterwards because i don't do gloss colors very often at all hardly ever do gloss colors i'm no good at doing glosses that come out glossy what i'm doing here is putting down a light mist coat first and then going back and adding the gloss on top this was a mistake Tamiya paints are very easily just slapped on. You don't have to worry about them too much. It's not like MIG paints, like the ammo paints, where you have to do a mist coat and then another mist coat and another mist coat to get a smooth finish. With Tamiya paints, you can just whap them on there and they'll level out quite nicely. So what I should have done is just put this paint on. It's going on to primer. I should have just put the paint on in one coat. There you go, slap, nice and shiny. What I did though, because I did this mist coat, it didn't work. It came out patchy with rough spots. So if you are spraying gloss paints, the Tamiya paints at least, just bang them on. Don't worry about it. <sighs> yeah, and I even thinned it a little bit as well. So you'll see later on, it doesn't give me a nice glossy black coat. And when you're using things like C1 Metalizer, you need a glossy black coat. Ideally, you want to use enamels or lacquers, not acrylics. But I had acrylics, so there you go. So anyway, this is just putting down the black gloss coat, which doesn't come out that glossy. Never mind. Okay, so the spoon's been gloss blacked, and I will admit, I suck at painting gloss colours. These are kind of, they're rough and dimply. They're not perfect. I mean, if this was supposed to be a gloss model, it'd be awful. I'd have to sand it down to make it smooth. So they've got a bit of a texture to them, but it's just a test. It's just a quick test. I'm not so fussed, but I will be honest and admit, I really can't spray gloss colours for my life, which is why I don't do gloss models, or at least I don't use gloss paints if I can avoid it. So the next step uh, is we're going to do the gunmetal part. So we're going to do gunmetal on two of them. This one, or well, this one will be gunmetal, and then we'll have the chrome silver dry brushed over the top. This one, we're gonna, I'm gonna change the order around. This one, we're gonna just do as gunmetal. And tell you what, I'm gonna do. Let me get a sharpie and I'm right on them, so I know which is which. So this one is gonna be gunmetal plus chrome. This one is gonna be just gunmetal. This one will be uh, C1. What were the other ones? Uh, so this is going to be C1, but plus we're going to try putting the orange over the top. And this one is going to be C1 plus varnish. Just to see what happens if you put a gloss varnish over C1. What else did I have? Gunmetal. So I've got gunmetal and chrome. Just gunmetal. Uh, oh, we're going to try one with just chrome silver. Let's just see what chrome silver does on its own. So, what we need to do, we need to do the gun metal on these three first. So, let's give this a try. What we're going to do, I've got a special mix. I've got Tamiya X10 gun metal. What I've done is basically fill this bottle with uh, Ultimate Airbrush Thinner. 
you can use Tamiya X28 if you want, or any acrylic paint thinner, to about here. And then I've added literally a few drops of gunmetal. Now, if you just spray gunmetal through the airbrush, it comes out a really dark color. It's also a really thick paint because of all the, ma the paint flecks. So it doesn't really work under or through anything less than a 0.5 airbrush. However, what I like to do is spray it super thin like this. It gives a whole different color. It doesn't come out dark and metallic and flaky like gunmetal does. It comes out kind of light color. I don't know if you can see the swirlies in there, it's great. Uh, it comes out kind of light color because you're doing it in super thin coats. It's almost like a glaze if you're brush painting. So we need to paint this on. Uh, apologies, by the way, the last bit, I have to do voiceover because you can't hear me over the, over the extractor fan. So that's the way it's gonna go, it's dribbling. So I'll go and get the airbrush ready and we'll give it a go. Okay, so here we go. I'm just putting it on now. Now, I will confess, uh, I did a first few coats. They might see a few speckles on the spoons here. I did the first few coats, and I didn't really have enough gunmetal in the mix. So I actually increased the amount of gunmetal to something like 10 or 15 drops if you're using a dropper. I just poured it straight from the pot, so I'm going to guess it's about 10 or 15, maybe even 20 drops, just to have more gunmetal in there. It was, it was When I first put it on, it was basically just putting thinner on it. So I added some more gun metal. It did take me about seven or eight coats to get something resembling a shiny shiny. It didn't quite come out right. And as I'll tell you later, when you're doing this kind of very thin spraying, it's a kind of lottery as to whether it works. It doesn't always work. Uh, so it didn't quite come out as I intended, but it's, again, it's just a test. We're just playing with spoons to get some ideas. Okay, so that's the gun metal ones. Uh, came out a little darker than I'd hoped for, but it, it works. The trick with the method I use, where I use really thin down gun metal, is it's not predictable. Sometimes it comes out really bright and shiny, sometimes it comes out darker. But it's got a nice metal look to it. It's not the best finish in the world, but again, these are just test spoons, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to leave those to dry for a bit. Uh, that one we're going to leave just as gun metal, so that's going to be left as it is. This one is going to have the chrome silver dry brushed over the top, so we'll put that to one side to dry. Uh, speaking of chrome silver, the next spoon is the one that's just going to have chrome silver over the black. See how that comes out. So let's get that done now. For this one, I'm just using Tamiya Chrome Silver X11. And it has, it's basically half a cup of thinner in the airbrush cup. And then a few brushfuls of the chrome silver mixed in. So it's reasonably thin. And we're doing it at about 15 PSI. So let's have a look and see how this comes out. Okay, so nothing really to explain here. We're just applying it on in one big fat thick coat like I kind of didn't do with the gloss black So I just applied this, this is the beauty of Tamiya paints. They are quite good at leveling out So you can just put the paint on uh, now one thing I did do here when I did the final visor And I don't explain this in, in the following bits, but when I did the final visor I actually looked the PSI to about 20 uh, and it did seem to go on a lot smoother. This comes out a bit grainy so Try spray about 20 PSI, you might get a smoother coat and move a bit slower than I am as well. That also contributed to it being a bit grainy. Okay, so that's the chrome silver spray. It's just dry nicely. Uh, and as you can see, when you spray chrome silver, it's not that shiny. It's not that shiny at all when you spray it. But when we do the dry brushing on the other piece that we put the gun metal on, you'll see how shiny it can get if you dry brush it. So that's the chrome silver one done. So I'm going to put that to one side so it can dry. Now the next one, we are going to use the C1 Metalizer. Now the next bit I'm going to film, I'm going to film as an instructional video for e models as well. So apologies when I cut to the next section that I'll be introducing myself again. Just put up with it. It's because I'll be doing it as a separate video for e models and I don't want to film the same thing twice. So, right, let's go and get this done. Hey everyone, it's Fox from Model Making Guru here. Hello, hello, welcome to a little quick tutorial on a product that is now available in the eModel store, and that product is C1 Models C1 Metalizer. This is a metallic or a fine buffing powder for creating metallic effects, exactly as it says there. Uh, this is an alternative to using uh, things like Alclad and other metallics that might give you a glossy, shiny, chromey finish. Uh, and what we're going to do today is just very quickly show you how to use this. So what do you get? In the box, you get uh, two little applicators. Now you might be wondering why I've got stuff all over my fingers, but I'll tell you that in a minute. Two little applicators. You get the pot of C1 itself, which doesn't actually come looking like that. <laughs> I've a bit used this already, so it's a bit scruffy. Uh, you get a pair of gloves, but these are my own gloves, but you do get a pair of gloves, and you get a small mask. The mask is important 
because you don't want to breathe this stuff in. So I'm going to put the mask on now. Now I can pretend I'm a surgeon or a field medic or something. <sighs> right, so I've got my mask on just to stop me breathing anything in. How do you do it? Well, what you do, as I say, this is an alternative to spraying on a metallic paint and it's a buffable metallic powder. Uh, now there are many out there. Some of them aren't very permanent. Some of them are a bit tougher. This is a little bit tougher than most, so it will stay on and it's not going to come off as soon as you handle a model straight away. Uh, but there are certain things you need to be aware of. So, we have here two test spoons. These are my spoons. Uh, and as you can see, they're shiny black. When you're painting your model, obviously prime it. Make sure the surface is as clean and smooth as possible. If you've been doing any sanding or any sort of work on the plastic, make sure you get any sanding marks out because they will show up later on. So I've just got these two plastic spoons from a popular American drive through takeaway. Uh, they have been primed with the uh, uh, Army Painter White Primer. And then I painted them over black with Tamiya X1 Gloss Black. And that's all the preparation I need to do. Now, you, there are gloss black primers as well, uh, and you can use those. But whatever you do use, it's important that you don't polish them or buff them to get them shiny. You want the paint as it is. No gloss coat, no polishing and buffing. It needs to be like the paint is. It needs a little bit of roughness to it so the powder can grip properly. If you polish it to a mirror smooth finish, yeah, it's not gonna, it's not gonna work quite as well. And also, you can use whatever colour you want. Uh, you could do a shiny blue, you could do a shiny green, a shiny red, whatever colour you see fit. Uh, the difference being, the black will give you the most chromey, chromey finish. The other colours will give you like a tinge of red or a tinge of blue. It'll it'll come through in the in the in the metalizer. And I've got to tell you, wearing this mask when you've got a full face beard, oh, I'm sweating now. So how do you use this powder? It's dead easy. Oh, one other thing you get in the pack are these little buffing pads. Uh, you get a little pack of these, they're really handy. If you run out, don't worry, just go to your local boots or wherever that sells makeup stuff, and get some makeup applicator spongy type thing. Same for these, you can probably get similar. If you've used Tamir Pastels, you'll recognize these are just little applicators. So let's get this going. One important thing, and the reason you get the gloves, and the reason I've got this tissue down that's throwing the white balance out, is because this stuff gets straight away, gets everywhere. As you can see, it's a dark, powdery substance. It could be graphite. It could be very similar to graphite. I don't know if it's graphite or not, but graphite has a similar effect, but it couldn't be easier to use. All you do, get a generous dot of it on yon applicator. And all you do is simply, as Ted would tell you, what's Ted gonna tell you what to do? Of course he is. What are you gonna tell him to do, Ted? Slap it on. There you go, slap it on. And just be really generous with it. And just get it all over the piece you're wanting to get it on. Now, like I say, it is important to use a gloss color underneath to get the best chromey, shiny effect. If you don't use a gloss, it's just not gonna work. You'll just get a gray color. So let's just get these on. Now, for the purposes of this demonstration, the finish on the black paint isn't the best in the world. I will freely admit, I suck at painting gloss colours. I really, really do. I suck hard at painting gloss colours. So it's not exactly perfect. Okay, so that's a nice fair amount on there. You can be really generous. You're probably losing loads on your tissue, but don't worry, you can put it back into the pot. This stuff will last you years. There's tons in the pot, that'll last you years. Now I'm gonna do both of these. I'm actually doing these spoons for something else. I'm actually filming something else at the moment that I'm using these spoons for. Uh, so that's why I've got writing on the inside, but I'll do both at once. And we'll see how this comes out. So I'm just making sure it's got nice coverage, nice and even. Work it round in small circles just to make sure you've got good coverage and no obvious streaky marks or anything like that. But as you can see here, I'm not being particularly careful. Not really thinking, which is, well, it's normal for me anyway. And let's just be honest, we all know that. Okay. So now we've got both of those parts covered. Just knock off the excess. Right, so what I'm gonna do is for obvious reasons, I'm gonna put the lid back on here because hey, Captain Spillage time. Uh, don't throw these little applicators away. They'll last you just as long as normal. And all we need to do now is get ourselves one of these little applicators, knock off the excess, and then get the soft side and just start going over it in small circles, just start buffing it. And 
you can see it's transferring off now what you're doing as you would with any metallic kind of powder like this the way it basically works and the same with graphite is that you're compressing the metallic particles they're basically tiny microscopic metallic particles and you're buffing them and you're compressing them and when you're compressing them they're all kind of lining up now if you've ever used graphite for a metallic effect you'll know if you just put graphite on a model it's just gray but when you buff it or squash it or compress it it goes shiny metallic and all you're doing is you're basically forcing all the little metallic flakes to line up and because they're all ordered and compressed and lined up lined up they reflect light much better and there we have it and you can carry on buffing for as long as you want if you think it's not quite shiny enough you can always put some more on if you choose to do so now like I said before before you start putting this on a model do make sure you've got the surface as smooth as you can before you start priming it and painting it because if you've got any little sanding marks or anything like that there's a very good chance they'll show through now it's a nice shiny surface it's more likely to show off any imperfections in the surface so do make sure you've got them nice and smooth there we go cut that use the other side and there we have our nice and shiny chrome surfaces you can put on a fair bit of pressure so what we'll try and do we'll try and put some more on more on <laughs> mm. now you can see here where i was saying about imperfections where i've got a bit of roughness in the paint you can see there it's showing that through so it does show it's not you want it to be as good as you possibly can so i'm going to put some more on and see what happens because you can build it up okay a bit of coverage on there now this layer may not stick as well because obviously it's trying to stick to the now shiny surface. But you can see it comes out super nice. Now you'd have to work pretty hard to take it off and get back down to the paint again. It is quite tough stuff. So there we go. That is that now. Nice and metallic and shiny. Now it's not perfect the surface I put it onto wasn't perfect uh, it's not going to be as close to chrome as actually spraying on chrome obviously nothing really ever would be uh, it's a bit more shiny than some of the lacquer based, lacquer based buffable paints and obviously it's an alternative method to doing shiny chrome effects it will never replace ping it will never replace actually using real chrome or chrome paints like you get in, a, in an auto body shop but for the model maker it's a good quick and easy way to get nice shiny metal effects and you can't beat it and that pot will last you years and again I use black on here so you can see all the imperfections in the in the paint which is actually if I remember rightly imperfections in the primer and like I said, I'm no good at spraying gloss colours. I just suck at it big time. So it's not the smoothest colour. But even if you do get that, don't don't be tempted to sand it or polish it because it will just ruin the effect. So there we have it. That is C1 Metalizer. Uh, like I say, if you use a different colour to black, it's quite dark. But if you use, say, a, a blue or a red, you would have a different colour coming through, a different tint to the chrome effect because it's kind of semi-translucent so you, you're picking up you're referencing the color that's underneath i'm going to take this mask off now because it's too warm hang on oh oh sweating you're picking up the color that's underneath so if i'd done a red color say or a blue color a glossy blue color i'd have a whole different tint but there you go now imagine if you hadn't made a mess of the gloss coat like i did because i suck at gloss coats that would be a wonderfully shiny chrome finish so 
there you go so take care with you with your either your gloss primer or your gloss paint coat get this on done no problem it is fairly sturdy once it's on you can handle it but try and avoid it without gloves try and avoid handling it altogether it will pick up fingerprints uh, but you can just rub them off it's a bit more sturdy than some of the other powders that are out there but it's not impervious you can apply decals over this again but just be careful you probably don't want to use any sort of uh, setting solutions just on the off chance they they have any interaction with the powder but yeah you can go ahead and put decals on this uh, so if you were looking for a, a quick and easy way to do a metallic shiny piece there you go so get yourself some c1 metalizer it's available now at your models go and grab some uh, and give it a try Okay, so yes, yeah, sorry about having to introduce myself and stuff. I'm going to use that clip for models uh, in one of their how-to videos, so that's why it was done like that. But you can see now, there we go, two shiny ones. So we've got C1 plus, I don't know what that says, a, oh, varnish, can't read my writing. Uh, and this is C1 plus orange. So what we're going to do is basically this one will just have the orange put straight over it to see what happens. This one I will give a coat of the pledge gloss varnish just to seal it in and see what happens my suspicion is it will just turn gray and not be very interesting but you never know uh, and with this one I have a suspicion the orange clear orange to me a clear orange might actually eat into it but again you never know so I need to leave these for a little while to, to uh, just do their thing and then when we come back we'll do that so I'm back in a moment okay so let's get some gloss varnish on this this is the one that's got c1 and then it'll have varnish right on top and i'm going to be using my favorite pledge floor care finish two times two times two times i can't do the audio effect sorry i'm doing a voiceover it doesn't work it'd kill the timeline <sighs> anyway yes so we're going to see what happens now i'm spraying the pledge neat always spray it neat never thin it down and first off i'm doing a light mist coat just to get key the surface just to get some grip on there uh, and at this point, I'm now just air drying it. I'm just putting air through the airbrush, no no varnish. This is just to sort of flash off that. The first coat is just to give some grip for the second coat. Now the second coat, when we get ready to go in, still air drying it. Come on, Fox, get faster. <sighs> second coat, here we go. This is going to be uh, a lot more going on. And we're going slower and we're going more carefully. We're being quite generous. I've pulled back the trigger quite far. I just want to get one nice thick wet coat. And now I'm air drying it again just to flash it a little bit. So that when the third coat goes on, it's a little bit tacky, but it's not so flowy that it's going to flow around when the air gets blasted onto it. So light mist coat plus air for keying it. Then one thick coat and a few seconds of air like I'm doing here. And then when that's done, go and your third coat which I'm about to do around about... I need to do this faster. It's not a fast process. Around about now. There you go. So again, another nice thick wet coat. Just go over slowly, get everything covered, and then just give that a few seconds of air and put it to one side to dry. Cover it up because Pledge is a dust magnet. It will attract dust. So cover it up with something so it can dry. It's handleable within maybe two or three hours, but for best results, leave it for 24 hours to fully cure before you go ahead and put anything else on top. Oh, I'm actually doing a fourth coat. I forgot I did a fourth coat. Hey! Okay, so I did a fourth coat, so I want extra shine. You can do more coats if you want. Okay, well, while that pledge floor care finish two times more shine two times more shine is drying over the next 24 hours which i'll have to leave it for we'll give the uh, the dry brushing of the chrome silver this is the one that's gun metal with chrome silver dry brushed over it gotta say that pledge that went on the um on the c1 metalizer looked quite good actually it's not dried yet so it's, st it's still wet so it may dissolve away the the, the pigment but i don't know it it, it kind of looked like gun metal so it didn't come out like chrome but it can look like gun metal and what i'm thinking is if i choose to use that as the final method what i may do is actually use a black enamel um, layer of paint underneath a gloss black enamel because enamel does level a bit flatter that black paint didn't come out right at all so yeah 
anyway, we'll see how it comes out. It's going to be quite dark. I don't want it to be bright and sparkly like a chrome orange. I want it to be dark because his, his visor is quite dark. So we're going to be using Tamiya X11 chrome silver again, but this time we're going to dry brush. Make sure that's the right one. Yes. So you've seen me do dry brushing a million times. Get some dry brushing. This is my favourite dry brushing brush in the world. It's a Gradela Graduate flat shader. Can't tell you what size because that's covered up with crap. So we're going to get a load on the brush. We're going to get most of that off on the old piece of tissue over here, just off camera. And all we're going to do is we're going to dry brush over the gun metal. Yeah, that's it, Swish Dig. And we're going to slowly build up the chrome silver. Now, if you remember when I airbrushed that other one, chrome silver, the chrome silver came out really kind of grainy and not particularly shiny and a bit flat, and it wasn't very interesting. But like I said then, if you dry brush chrome silver, you can get a much more shiny effect. Now it's going to take a little bit of work because I've got to build this colour up. Now I'm getting most of the paint off on the brush and that's the important bit. You're not painting the chrome silver on. You're dry brushing it. If you just paint it on it, it won't look the same. Now I'm used to doing dry brushing like this over rough and detailed surfaces. Flat surfaces, not so much. So it may take a little more work than normal to get it as a nice smooth colour. Okay, so here we are, the spoons are ready for the orange paint. Uh, just to quickly go through, we have the gunmetal, which was just thinned down gunmetal. It doesn't give you a nice even colour, but it gives you some shine. We have gunmetal with chrome silver dried over it that looks like a tin spoon. We have the chrome silver that was sprayed on, and that's just chrome silver sprayed over the black. Uh, quite thickly and as you can see it's not massively different it's just a not quite as smooth as the dry brush chrome silver it's not far off but it's, you, it's just ever so slightly different you can see it's a little more dull we have the c1 which was just the powder stuck on and there's nothing on top of it it's just c1 powder and then we have the c1 powder with some pledged floor care finished two times more shine, two times more shine. over the top and as you can see it has dulled it a little bit although it's hard to know whether this was a bit duller to start with because of the crappy acrylic black coat underneath, I'm not sure. As I've said all the way through so far, I wasn't happy with that black coat, but it's only a test, so it doesn't matter. When I do the actual visor, I might do enamel black just to get as smooth as finished as possible. So it is a slightly dull, so you can spray over this stuff. You can spray over C1, but it's not quite as, quite as reflective. This looks more sharp and clear. However, it's not coming off and it's not dulling when I touch it. So, assuming that if this comes out the best, I might just go with this. This stuff just doesn't come off. I mean, it will do if you rub it hard enough, but yeah, you don't even have to seal over it. And I've painted a yellow line using uh, Citadel's Avalan Sunset, just by way of an experiment, because I want to see what happens if I uh, put orange over that. I might have a plan for that. But it's interesting, I can paint over that powder, no problem. And it says you can put decals on, no problem. I'm kind of liking this C1 powder. It's darker than I thought. And again, it's not perfectly smooth because the paint underneath wasn't smooth, but yeah, we'll see. Anyway, enough of that. Need to get some orange on this now and see what happens. For this, I'm going to use Tamiya's X26 Clear Orange. I've had to thin it down quite a bit because it's quite syrupy by itself. So let me go and get the airbrush ready and we'll do the spraying. Okay, nothing major to report here, although what I will say is if what you see me doing here is me learning. So when I did the final visor, I did things a bit differently. Um, I'm using PSI, I have about 15 PSI here, and I'm doing like a reasonable coat, doing the next spoon, doing the next spoon, then going back and adding another coat until it was dark enough. When I did the final visor, this experimentation helped me realize it's a Tamiya paint. Just dob it on, uh, make the first coat nice and thick, get in there it'll look a bit dimply but don't worry without air drying it once you've covered the whole thing go back and do another coat and then another coat and just go until it's the right color uh, you do have to thin the paint it is very very syrupy you'd be unlikely to be able to spray it straight off but you can see here I'm going through spoon by spoon and then if I let this video run long enough you see me go back and do more and do more 
don't. Just get it all done in one go. Do multiple coats, but do them all a coat and then a coat and then a coat. So cover the whole piece, go back, cover the whole piece. Don't leave them time in between. It does smooth out a lot once it dries, uh, but it may be a little bit speckly by the end, but it's fine. When it comes to the finished thing, I'll put a gloss varnish over the visor anyway, and that will just add to the shine. So don't pay too much heed to exactly how I'm doing it here. This was me just sort of testing and experimenting and figuring out the best way to do it. When I did the final the visor on the final figure, I actually moved a lot slower with the airbrush, more like I was doing a gloss varnish. I kind of moved at that sort of speed like you saw me. So I kind of treated it just like a gloss varnish, but without the initial mist coat. I didn't do a mist coat, I just went straight on. Okay, and the results are in. Hmm, varied results and some very strange results. So going from the left, we have the chrome silver with the orange on top, which is quite nice. Not super reflective, but get a gloss coat on that, it'll look quite nice. We have the gunmetal with the chrome silver dry brushed on top, which looks quite nice, but it's a bit patchy. I don't know what these bits are, I must have scuffed it, but it looks a bit patchy, so not ideal. Then we have the, what are these ones? This is just the gunmetal on its own, done as a th very thin application. It's quite a nice dark colour, but again, it's a bit too patchy. So it's between these two so far. And these are the C1s. This is C1 on its own, with the orange painted right over the top, and it's quite a nice colour. It's a bit dark, but it's actually come out quite nice. With a gloss coat on top of that, it would look quite shiny. This is the C1 with Pledge on it. And look at that, it's gone all alligator -y. All the, the orange is just crackled and cracked. Now I'm not really sure what that is. My only suspicion is that perhaps the orange paint is crackling because of surface tension on the gloss coat, possibly. That's the only thing I can think. Unless I just didn't leave the gloss long enough to cure, I don't know. But I left it overnight, so... Hmm, I think I might just be trying to spray the orange onto a glossy, shiny surface, so surface tension kicks in and it all pulls apart. So that's obviously not going to happen. So it's down between these now. I do like this one. I do like this. And it's dead easy, because it's just literally black powder and then orange but it's a bit dark I think I'm tempted to go between these two the chrome silver sprayed on or the gunmetal with the chrome silver dry brushed over and I'm not sure this looks a bit smoother than this because this has got a slight texture to it but by the same token this looks a bit patchy hmm which might work with the weathered effect. Get a gloss coat on it, it might look quite cool. But I'm thinking I might just go for the chrome silver. Spray on the chrome silver, get the orange on top, and then go for a gloss coat just to kind of darken it a tiny amount and shine it up. I think that might be the way I go. As for the yellow stripe, didn't really work. It just looks a bit silly. So I think we'll, we'll not bother with the yellow stripe, but I think we'll go for the chrome silver. So we'll get a black base on there. We'll go for chrome silver. I don't think the fact it was a glossy black made any difference at all to the chrome silver because once you spray the chrome silver on, you're spraying it on quite thick. It's not going to. So I'll just get it black primed, chrome silver, and then we'll go with that. So, right, I'll go and get all the masking done on the helmet, get it painted up, and when we come back, I'll show you the finished thing. I'll get a gloss coat on the top of the helmet as well. So, I'll now spend about a day doing that, but for you, it'll be a few seconds. Back in a moment. Okay, so the visor has been painted and ta -da, here we are. Here is the finished visor. I've painted the visor completely and I've also painted the trim around the edge, which I it kind of looks like a kind of rubbery stuff. So I'll take you through how I did that. Um, I didn't want to film the process because I'd already shown you the evaluation process on the spoons, which is what I really kind of wanted to focus on, me figuring out the best way to do it. So I thought there's no point me showing you the whole process again while I do film it. So what we did was, the, the primer underneath was already black anyway, so I just went over with the Tamiya Chrome Silver, give it a nice flat coat, uh, then I went over with the clear orange, uh, which didn't come out looking very metallic, it just came out like kind of orange. So what I then did was go over with some of the Necron Compound, Citadel's Necron Compound dry brush, 
just around the edges here and in a couple of places just to give a slight of, a sort of hint of scuffed and damaged because if you look in like Halo 4 or 5 by that time he's taken damage to his suit and his, his visor does have a crack in it in Halo 5 I think um, so I wanted to suggest the kind of metallic -y thing so I thought why not just dry brush around it and you'll get those sort of if you get it in the right light it kind of has a metallic -y tinge to it it was dry brushed all over but really lightly everywhere and heavier in patches where I wanted it to suggest it was sort of battered and worn because it's never really clear if it's glass or something else under there I mean obviously it's glass but you never get this idea it could be some kind of transparent metal you don't know you don't know in the law so anyway it just gives it that kind of nice metallic -y look and I'm really happy with how it came out there's about six coats of um, pledge on there to give it the gloss now it's not the smoothest in the world um, if you use say a lacquer gloss varnish you could then go over and buff it with a little sort of dremel tool and a buffing thing just to just to buff it down but I don't think you can do that with pledge at least I didn't want to try it and risk it I could technically polish that to an even greater shine but I'm really happy it's not supposed to look factory fresh so that was done uh, all the masking was removed and thankfully thankfully nothing came off there was no paint removal with the masking uh, I think the matte coat over the whole thing just basically locked everything in place and as I've added more coats of paint they've become more grippy so the problem with the polypropylene seems to have been for the most part resolved I did mask things really lightly uh, I'll show you a picture of all the masking on the helmet here uh, and yeah it was kind of very delicately done now I did find that the chrome silver went down very very smooth um, I think it's probably because when I did the spoon I started off with a light coat and then went in a bit heavier I thinned it down a little more uh, I put the pressure to 20 psi and I just went <laughs> and slapped it on Slap it on and it did actually come out a lot smoother and shinier than the spoon did so there's your trick thin it a little bit but go to about 20 psi depending on your brush it might be less or more but go a bit heavier with the pressure and just get it on there just do it in one big thick coat and it came out quite smooth uh, the orange I had some troubles with, I had to get it about the right thickness uh, and that was about 15 psi, or did I do it at 20? I think I actually did it at 20, I meant to set it to 15 and my compressor screwed up and for some reason it said when I came back and finished it was at 20 so it went on at 20, it was thin the same as on the spoon test and that came out a bit smoother as well, I probably went a bit darker than I'd planned but I'm glad how it came out. I'm really pleased with how it came out. The other ones were a bit too dark and bronzy. The ones with the C1 metalizer. So this came out exactly. The rubber trim was just very simply. Uh, I basically painted over it about four times with some Nuln oil. So I just got a big brush. I got this brush, which is not small. And I just went over it. Not carefully. Because I knew that where it went onto the, 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 the trim, which was already black from the primer anyway, it would just fill it out a little bit, get rid of any overspray from the green, and it would collect along this edge and give a slight fade. Uh, so I did about three, four coats of that. So you just put it on, let it dry, do another coat. And I found Nuln Oil is brilliant if you want to suggest rubber trim, like things like rubber trim around windscreens and things like that. Just build it up in a few coats. One coat would be a bit gray, two coats a bit darker, three coats you're getting towards black, four coats you're almost at sort of black rubber kind of to me a rubber black kind of levels uh, that went on nice and then just to it was looking very black so just to pull it back a bit and give it a bit of a dusty dirty look i did a couple of coats of seraphim sepia the, another shade exactly the same principle just blapped it on i didn't think about it but i did try and collect more in this little ridge here between the visor and the rubber strip just to give a slight fade because it was basically orange and then the black so the seraphim sepia in there just fades it a little bit. There were some little bits where the, you could still see silver. So that just faded it in quite nicely. Just get it in there. Uh, if I just do one or two coats, I'll get a nice sort of graduation from the orange to the black. I won't just get a brown line where the seraphim sepia has gone. So that came out really, really nice. So I am really, really pleased with that. So that is now done. Uh, the next step is going to be starting doing all the chipping. I'm not going to do too much chipping because I'm quite happy with the sort of minimal scraping we've got here but it's time to do a load of chipping so we need to get chipping on this uh, and then on to the next and last few steps so hopefully the last the next episode might even be the last one so yes brilliant i'm glad that worked out I, I've, I've not very often tried painting clears over metallics it wasn't a fun experience painting the clear over the metallic i gotta tell you when you've got a specific goal in mind a specific look 
you might not get that look it's not exactly what i was looking for but it works fine it, it works for me it's got a hint of metallic when you look at it in the right light and it's better than just the orange that was on the original figure and using the cgi reference that i've got it is kind of orange i know it's supposed to have the hexagonal pattern but i didn't have any kind of masks for that i wasn't sure how to do that and since i filmed this and since i painted this hundreds of people have said oh i've just bought this and i've just got this from a nail art shop and i've just got this so i now i know how i could have done that but it's too late now so that is going to do it so thank you very much for watching uh, in the next one like i say we'll crack on with the chipping and detail painting and stuff like that that might be the last episode it might be another one to come i need to get this done so i can sell it get back onto the eagle uh, but thank you very much for watching uh, as always thank you so much for being a patron it does mean the world to me uh, content's been a bit sporadic over the last few weeks I know uh, there's been a lot of stuff in real life I've had to deal with so I am doing my best to get content out to you as much as possible uh, because of the size of this and the size of the eagle I can't work on both at the same time so at the moment I'm doing this as soon as this is done I'll get back to the eagle then we'll get back on with some of the builds and I will be going back to Gumpler don't panic don't panic I know some have expressed concern that I'm not doing Gumpler I won't do just Gumpler forever I will do other things but I will go back to Gumpler don't worry so yes so Right, let's go and put this to one side and I'll go and get the next bit started. But thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, and until next time, adios amoebas. Bye. Says Master Chief. Bye. Shut up. Bye. Bye. Bye.